search your cell phone records or your cell phone in general without a warrant. Two related cases are being heard by the Supreme Court today. They're timely given the debate over government surveillance of cell phones and the renewed focus on the Fourth Amendment, which protects against unlawful search and seizure. Let's bring in Judge Andrew Napolitano, Fox News Senior Judicial Analyst. So, Judge, I always like to start with these scenarios before we get to these cases. Okay. Let's just say I was arrested. It'll never happen. Well, just a it's hypothetical. Not it's a just wild, a weird hypothetical. And I didn't have a cell phone on me, but I had a date book, a schedule with all my contacts and a lot of information. If police arrested me, or th do they have access to my purse, my wallet, what's what anything that I have recorded that the I'm carrying the on answer, me? The answer is, generally speaking, no. The police are allowed to search what's incidental the, to the arrest, that is, what's on your person or within your control, to protect them. So they can only look for a weapon that you might have in your pocket or within your reach at the time of arrest. They cannot look for substantive information from you without a search warrant. So that plays into one of these cases, a few of them actually that the Supreme Court is looking at, but in one of these situations, they, they pulled over a guy for a traffic violation and in searching his car, they found something, and then they searched his cell phone right. and found that he was connected to a gang-related murder. Yes, yes. And, and that's he was... the big question of whether or not they were able to do that, to look at the cell phone. Yes, but, but they're, they're, the argument that he's making of, the, of his cell phone is, was a fishing expedition. They didn't ask me anything about the murder. They didn't have any reason to go there. The second argument he's making is, they had my cell phone. They should have been able to go to a judge and get a search warrant as in order to enter the cell phone. The police are saying, you know what, it's incidental to an arrest. We never know what we're going to find, especially when a person's involved in, in gang relation because he communicated to some third person, the, the person that he communicated with via the cell phone, he's waived his right to privacy. I think the cases are, I don't even think this is a close call, I think the cases are pretty strong in favor of requiring the search warrant. Now, law enforcement says, though, hey, if we get this person, whoever it is that we're looking to arrest, and let's say they have information about a kidnapped child on the phone, but I have to put the phone in the evidence bag and talk to a judge before looking through it, I may be missing an opportunity to get a bad guy. You say what? That the government uh, always fantasizes these emergency cases, and this was not uh, an emergency. This was a case for a fishing expedition. The court might very well treat a true emergency a little bit differently. Uh, you know, so the so-called ticking time bomb or the, the child about to be killed by uh, kidnappers. But in this case, the police broke into the phone and just began randomly looking through it, not even knowing or expecting what they were looking for. Another scenario, because this is also coming up in these cases, there's a difference between a flip phone and a smartphone. Yes. So you have the smartphone out in your desk and the police are questioning you and text messages are coming up and they're lighting up the phone and the police can see it. In that case, are they able to look at it? No. They don't have the right to see that phone. They, again, they can only take from you at the time of arrest what they believe might harm them. I mean, they could take your phone and your wallet and your shoes and your belt away from you, but they can't examine them. They can't go inside the phone, even if something is, is flashing on its How face. How do you think this, these cases, again, we're talking about, it's very personal to, to us and our privacy and our rights. How do you think they're impacted by this ongoing debate about NSA surveillance and well, the government I, looking into our phones, perhaps without us knowing that about really it? That really depends on who you ask, but, but I, I do think, because some justices in the Supreme Court will say, the phone is protected depending upon where you are when you're arrested. If you're arrested in your house, it's absolutely protected because the Fourth Amendment mentions house. If you're arrested in your car, ah, it's kind of iffy because the Fourth Amendment doesn't mention car. So that's what some justices would say. Others would say in 2014, the cell phone and the flip phone contain all kinds of personal information you never intend to give to the police. If they want it, they need a warrant. Very interesting. I think all of us feel probably very protective about our cell phones and what's in I it. I think we do, too. I think members of the Supreme Court feel uh, we, protective we about know their cell their phones. Phone calls. Right. Um, it, just really quick here, Judge. Are we at the point in law enforcement where I would be able to text a judge, Twitter a judge to get the, the appropriate warrant that I would need? I'm wondering how law enforcement can now look, use technology to speed up some of the process to make sure that it stays constitutional according to your standards but doesn't slow it down. You know, when I was on the bench, we periodically had weeks where we had to sit 24-7. And I can remember police coming into my home 
while I was wearing gym shorts and a t-shirt at three in the morning, telling me what the evidence was and what they needed, and I signed search warrants. A colleague of mine signed a search warrant from the back of a motorcycle at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. So judges are almost always available, but I do think that tweeting would be going a little too much because, here's why, the judge must form an opinion of the believability of the police and of the evidence. That would be very, very difficult to do from a tweet. You actually have to look in the police policeman's policewoman's eyes often it's a it's a prosecutor not a cop and you have to actually evaluate what's in their hands and you can't always do so that you, over the you internet like that in person in person contact i think the constitution probably requires it judge great to see you i should have seen you you're looking well, good well, Jenna. thank you very much john what's in